Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. The court of public opinion is usually wrong because everyone has an opinion and they're usually all a bunch of assholes. So, turns out Gloria Scott, the sweet, innocent little old lady that was a security guard that was allegedly sexually harassed by Darius Geis, was trying to extort money from LSU using an AAU New Orleans basketball coach to get $100,000 in exchange for Darius Geis. If they're going to play in the bowl game, pay me the money. So, for those of you saying, well, Gloria Scott says she denied ever saying this, uh, uh, that she ever advised this man who represented her to uh, try to extort money from LSU. Well, after the fact... There's now a voicemail of Gloria Scott, the sweet, innocent little old lady, saying, Under no circumstances are you to listen to anyone that claims to represent me. Only this AAU coach who tried to extort money from you is representing me. Now, does that mean Darius Geis didn't sexually harass her? Or did sexually harass her? Doesn't mean any of that. But the fact that so many people in the court of public opinion and in the national media, in their infinite wisdom, believed her without any doubt kind of proves my point from the very beginning. Because from the very beginning, my bullshit meter was going way up. And it went up because this woman said she went to all kinds of newspapers and lawyers, attorneys, and the police department, and nobody would bother to help the sweet, innocent little old lady. You hear that? That's my bullshit meter going off. And then, on top of that, you really expect me to believe, and you expect everyone else to believe, that... After you called LSU to report that this had happened to Darius Geis, that their lawyers are all involved and your representative is involved, that after all of that, Ed Ogeron, the head football coach of LSU, picked up the phone and called you with Darius Geis right next to him asking for an apology and saying, can you please forgive him, all while preparing for a bowl game against Notre Dame? But Nick... Nick, she was crying in the courtroom. Well, that's horrible, I'm sure. Uh, but that's not what we call evidence. That's what we call an appeal to pathos. Meaning, you're using emotions and pity to try to make me believe you, instead of using logic and evidence. Now, you should avoid people who do this at all costs and keep running those bullshit meters up and at all times. But we'll let you know what else goes on with the LSU football program. And if anything damning towards uh, LSU or anything else damning towards Gloria Scott and this AAU basketball coach from New Orleans comes out. But speaking of other things going on in the LSU football program, Russ Calloway is leaving LSU football for the New York football giants. Who the hell is Russ Calloway? Good question. So for non-diehard LSU fans, uh... Off, Russ Calloway was the lead offensive analyst last year for LSU. He was a young guy in his early 30s. Uh, before that, in 2018 and 2019, he was the offensive coordinator for Sanford University, a Division II school, for two years, and he led the Division II in total offense in those two years. Very impressive resume. Young, up-and-coming guy. LSU brought him in to be an analyst last year, and so far, people really liked him and said, this guy's pretty smart. Well, why is he leaving? Well, one, it's the New York football giants. You get paid more, it's better on your resume, and you don't have to recruit, and your off-seasons are, well, actually off. And secondly, he was kind of passed over when he thought that he would get promoted. So this kind of thing didn't just happen overnight. The New York Giants didn't just randomly call him and say, hey, you want to get hired and be an, an analyst for us now? He was probably looking to move on for a while now, probably the last two or three months after these other staff members were hired, uh, or at least when he found out he wasn't getting a full-time staff job. There was a report back in December that Russ Calloway was being promoted to a full-time on-the-field staff position. We didn't know what it was, but it was sort of uh, uh, out there as a rumor, and there was even a report about it. Well, 
that didn't happen. And to top it all off, George Munoz, who was at Baylor and was the lead offensive analyst in the 2019 season, came back to LSU this year to basically add on to LSU's on-the-field staff, and I'm guessing that didn't go over for Russ Calloway. Not to mention... I had interviewed uh, Garrett Nussmeyer, the freshman LSU quarterback. Uh, I was interviewing him on Tiger Rag Radio a couple of months ago, asking him what he thinks of Russ Calloway and what he would think about him getting promoted. And here's what he said. I love Coach Calloway. Uh, we have a really good relationship. Uh, you know, he's probably the guy I talk to the most, I would say. Uh, you know, he, he's a great coach. Uh, you know, I really like his you know, his ideas and philosophies, philosophies as far as, you know, how the quarterback position works. Uh, you know, I think I'd be extremely ecstatic uh, if he was if they decided to promote from in-house and make him those seats. That would be a pretty awesome. Well, that that didn't happen. Uh, so, is it a big deal? No, because if he was such a great coach, as people says, then he probably would have gotten promoted. And look, there are a lot of great analysts out there. This is just getting a lot of play because it's the New York Football Giants taking someone from LSU. And so that's why it's big news. Speaking of another big news, people have been talking about if Joe Burrow has been pushing the Cincinnati Bengals to draft his former LSU teammate, Jamar Chase, with the fifth overall pick. Turns out Joe Burrow is not pressuring the Bengals to draft Jamar Chase and because I've been saying draft an offensive lineman. And that's been a debate going on on places like Pro Football Focus. Trey Wingo, who was on Pro Football Network, said... Quote, I can tell you that I got a text today from a member of the Bengals coaching staff that said, I've seen that out there. Not sure where that came from. That's not Joe, Joe Burrow. That's not how he is at all. He gives us great intel on LSU guys, but is respectful of his role as a player and ours as coaches and scouts, end quote. I hope to God this is true and that they draft Panay Sewell or Rashawn Slater, the two offensive linemen. I don't, I'd be happy with either one. You see, all of these people in the debates asking about should you draft a wide receiver or an offensive line, uh, or you should draft a wide receiver over an offensive lineman. Those people don't watch games. They watch highlights. Those people don't watch film. They watch stats. Because if they did watch games and film, they would see this last year's Super Bowl between, between the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. Both teams had great wide receivers, and both teams had great tight ends and some great running backs. But only one team had a great offensive line. So let me ask you something. How many of those great wide receivers for the Kansas City Chiefs help them win and make great plays when both starting offensive tackles for the Kansas City Chiefs were out? Because that was the ball game. See, statistically, if you look at the last several years in the NFL draft, the NFL draft is giving you fewer and fewer great offensive linemen and more and more gr great wide receivers. There will be a plethora of great wide receivers to come. You may even get some in the second round this year. But there are fewer great offensive linemen. But I'm not someone who played quarterback. But I'll finish the point I'm trying to make from a guy who actually plays quarterback currently in the NFL. This was Aaron Rodgers, who was on the Bill Simmons show on HBO back in 2016. Let's take a listen. Would you rather have A-minus running backs and receivers but a C minus offensive line or an A minus offensive line with D minus running backs and receivers. A minus offensive line. Really? How come? Yeah. Because if you can protect, if you can protect the quarterback, you're going to have an opportunity to find guys open. The defense just can't cover for that long. So, pro football focus. No, don't draft Jamar Chase. Draft Panay Sewell, draft Rashawn Slater, draft an offensive lineman. That's how football actually works. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.